Welcome to Attorney Commander J.R. Kopokwa Chesson Talk Show, T-G-I-F. Thank God the hell is Friday. Today is March the 17th, 2023. We wake up to the same beautiful day we had yesterday. Wasn't it beautiful? It was warm and nice. I had to take off my jacket. Can you imagine that? And today is the same promising day. Upper 50s, mid to upper 50s. So if you're out there, if the sun is out and nice, enjoy it. Enjoy it, okay? We don't know how long it's going to last or when it's going to come to an end. But why is here? Take heed and govern yourselves accordingly. Let me bring in my brother from Liberia, Mr. Samuel Worker, and let's talk about what's happening in Liberia. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, bro. You got all that noise behind you. Every time you come on, we're all away. Get away from that. No. <laughs> it, really, it really is fire from me, though. And maybe yeah, because of the echo, but it really is fire from me. That's my radio. You hear all that noise here, yeah, yelling, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some crazy people. How are you doing? And it really, yeah. They really call us on, on the show this morning. Oh, that uh, on the university. Yeah, the radio. Oh, people calling and 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 arguing. Some people intercepting the call. It's a heavy noise on the LU issue, the University Library issue. 
we politicians, politi yeah, politicians, politicians are calling on speedy, uh, I mean, to, to, to conduct speedy investigation. They, they, they blame is squarely on Akaros Gray and the president of the University of Liberia. In fact, the, the, the president of uh, Judas uh, Saudi Nelson has just suspended classes indefinitely. Oh, Let the people just bust up our campus. Now we see the two culprits here hawking. Yeah, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so the guys, the guys, the guys, they make fun of us, or 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 us, or our students. Our country is in trouble. Right. Man. Our country in trouble. You know, you go to destroy the whole nation. Millions of dollars waste. Yeah. A person died. Death. Yeah, Enjoy you guys having fun. Now, the people, uh, go ahead, Sam. The people want to try their strength. Uh, Akaras and 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 Yeke always forcing at, 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 at the house, always for, forcing when they're in session. So it, it looks like they want to bring it out to try their strength. And politically, oh. if they try their strength during this coming election, it'll be bloody. That's craziness. I because they both they, they, they both sides get zogos, they get the, the, the bad boys. Yeah, but the librarian people got to punish them man. because our country is a nation of laws, our country is a nation of, of order, and we have gone too far astray from what we stand for and believe in. And what surprised more people is that the president has never made a statement. But what did he say? The justice minister had, had, had ordered the police to investigate. How many times you investigate? No report, no result. From the, oh, I mean, many, many, many investigations, no result. See this little case. Apparently, George we are them don't know Liberian history. Apparently, they do immature to even understand what happened in Liberia over the past. Yeah, that's that, that's that's the fact. They do immature, immature, they immature. Know, because first of all. How you suspend politics on a university campus when we are in the year of national election? Uh huh. And students I mean, will be discussing. I mean, what students will be discussing what, politics. What kind of sense in that stupid shit when yeah. most educated people are in our nation are in the University of Liberia? Mm. They say that they should do not discuss politics. Do people know that this thing has happened before in Liberia? How many times do we suspend politics at LU? These guys don't know our damn history. And if you know our damn history, you will know certain things you can't do. That one where Akara's Gray was talking about going on the campus. I, I came and said, I said, this motherfucker don't know what he's doing. He's an idiot. And I, I will not use profanity, man. Well, when the people in our country are so low down and so disgusting, man, you, you very low in thinking, and very low in thinking, you know, like brain people, Sam, nobody ignorant. Wants see, nobody want to see the house. We want to see you. Don't don't show the house, please. Let us see you, yeah, please. I mean, this is insanity. This is see insanity. We talk about time and time again in our country. You know. <laughs> For educated people to be acting stupid. And now you have come out the only highest institution of learning in our country, the only government institution where politics is the bedrock of everything in the country. And then you come and say that people mustn't practice politics. But are they educated? Those are educated fools. They're supposed to be educated. For the president of our university, you better be educated. So that fools. You see things going wrong. If you can't take action. Uh, in the first place, I can't agree, had no red on campus. Well, you know sitting there. Is there where you super had lunch? They got restaurant all around. Campus. Both of them. I mean, our country has come to the point of total disgrace. Look at Yeti Kolobar sitting down there in the chair with his shite out and everything with those men behind him saying he's doing an interview. I mean, this is this is a representative of the Republic of Liberia. He looks like a, oh, yeah. he looks like a gangster. 
But that's a typical representation of what we're going through in Liberia. He looks fucking gangster. But we got gangster ruling on how, how Lord may won't be. Uh, uh, I mean, they won't, they won't, they won't perform like they, they won't, they won't, they won't show off the gangsters. Gangsters are ruling this country. The entire country is being ruled by gangsters. Eh? All the heavy ex fighters. They are all there. They are bodyguards or mostly big guys. The vice president got a buck of the NPF guy. Talk, we are getting mix of a Unimo, LPC, Lur, and all that. Our country has not emerged from the Civil War yet. We're still in that state of bellicose. Of, That's a fact. Of, of, of belligerent uh, leadership. I mean, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. In America, pumping all the money to these people, too. That's the double crazy shit. That's what I can understand. What is America getting from Liberia so much? She wore all these fucking war laws to be leading our country. Something wrong with America. If you know you get you, you if you know you are the power, you are the power or you got influence uh, uh over Liberia and uh, in Liberia, then you gotta come down and help to arrest many guys. But you're not doing it, Sanson. What Sanson can do? A lot of people on Sanson and, and still a lot of people. Liberian people got to, got to get away from America coming to Liberia to do shit in Liberia. What, what the hell America coming to Liberia to arrest people for? But when you go against America, then they kill you. Eh? Most most leaders going against America, I mean, they, they are the four victims. We have no damn leaders in our nation. We got nothing but criminals and rogues and deceitful people who are selling our country and the whole nation is useless. Our country is useless. Everybody is sitting there waiting for America to come change America. Liberia. That's the same shit that happened in 1980 with top of them. They see our country will go and run the mark. They see our country are going astray. Instead of them stand up and defend our nation, they were sitting there waiting for America, talking about America will come in 30 minutes to, to, to stop any war in the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How can you have sympathy for the people? How can you have sympathy for those people? They're leaders of a damn nation. Then you sitting now waiting for foreigners to come from 5,000 miles to find our country. We act as though we are not independent. We are people. Something wrong with us, man. We insane. We, stupid. we are not independent. We still not independent in this country. We're not independent. We generally rest Time we generally rest of Africa. We are still colonial people. But we can't be colonial to the total detriment of our nation. I don't care about people's perspective, about people's allegiance and alliances. But if you say you are Liberian and you believe in Liberia, you're patriot or Liberia, act fucking Liberian. Don't be in Liberia and depending on foreigners to come to Liberia to save Liberia from what? Ourselves? Each other? Mm. This is insanity, man. This is total, total, total insanity. And we can't go on this trend. We can't get... For one thing... For one thing to another. When you wake up in the morning, Liberia, it's all strange things. From one thing to another. Today, today is a new thing, yeah. It's a new thing. So, so today is university. Yesterday it was it was Gura Scott. Today is a university. Tomorrow it will be another nonsense. But you see the part of police. All the things that go on in Liberia never end. They, they never end. They just they just they drop it and start something new and talk about it and drop it. Then they come back to the sea. Oh, that how our cut that, that's the insanity of the Liberian society. The Please. Justice Minister ordered the police director to investigate. How far would that go? All investigation in this country with no result. So how far would that go? Especially when involved involve a sedition, a Carlos Gray. So how far would it, would, would it go? Would it hold, would it, would it, would it, would it hold you accountable? We you just in your mess in this country. Well, the, the point about it is they got to find out who to hold accountable. You know, we don't... So would, have... they, would, would they hold a Carlos Gray? They will be afraid because you're a lawmaker. Even a real party. And the whole both of them accountable. The two lawmakers but, that went on the university campus 
and carry on in those that kind of and, 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 and rule and uncouth manner that the face punishment. I will talk about it in my lesson when you leave. Is that all you got for us? Yeah, for today, that's all on 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 on, on radio, on the media, but the university issue. Uh, the letter okay. was the suspension of, of, of classes, indefinite suspension of classes by the university authority. Oh, they suspended all the classes? Yeah, indefinite suspension of political uh, activity rather not classes. Ah, and, 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 and 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 the university appointed the secretary to the to the to the faculty. Uh, he he's the head of the investigation, and he gave him one week to report to the, the faculty. Okay. No uh, suspend all progress. So so far, that's all we got for the day in this country. Okay. And I hope that I, although this, this, this investigation is, is speedy because in, in, in time past, most investigations have got no result, no end. So things, things are still happening here that are not called for. As a country, all these things are just bad for us. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Six years under this guy, administration, we're not going anywhere. No improvement, nothing. Everything is just, 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 just going backward. That's the problem in this country. So, I mean, we're not even understanding what, what's happening. But it's still one second term to do what? To plunge the brain into another mess, second term. Or because you want to find a way to eat money, to, to steal. So, what about stealing? Most young people want to work with government because they want to steal. Working government in Labrador like nowadays is stealing. Well, but does that you go to school to help your country be to improve. That that been a trend in Liberia forever. People think government is an is is is, is, is a pathway to wealth and illicit wealth and and, and, and goods. Okay, Sam. Uh, if that's all, I will see you tomorrow. Yes, sir. That's all for now. Stay safe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, and if anything, uh, let me know through the messenger. Yeah. Okay. I'll talk all to right. you. Have a good day. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I want to say to all my Catholic people around the world, happy St. Patrick's Day. Today is St. Patrick's Day. And for us Catholic, as students of Catholic institutions, we, this is a special day for us. Okay? okay? Standing up for St. Patrick's. He, he's an Irish. He did some uh, miraculous things uh, before he died. He's a real man, and we honor him today. Uh, learn about his canonization when he became a pope, I mean, a saint. Why they made him a saint? You know, some people say he, he got all the snakes away from, from Ireland and clear Ireland of snakes and all of that. Boy, I was stories, I gotta say, about St. Patrick's. He's a healer, okay? He's a man who talk about peace. He wanted to be an instrument of peace. So we got this song about him. Make me a minute of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, bring faith in you. Oh, me, de, 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 I may never see so much to console as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my heart. Make me a channel of your peace. That's a song of St. Francis. But all of this relates to St. Patty's Day, to the Catholic Church, to the singing of love, making me a channel of your peace, all of this. So as we rise this morning to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, all you Catholics out there, there will be parades, there will be celebrations, there will be church going, masses, wherever. Enjoy it. Okay, let Jesus make us a channel of his peace. Okay, Aluta, Continua. That is a message for the church too. Okay, let's get into my class for this morning. Now, 
This is what I had to put on. This is Akari's grave. Eyeke Kaluba. The two people that entered the University of Liberia campus last week, it caused such a havoc. We can't support none of them because both of them are wrong. Both of them have brought disgrace to our country. Now you see them all over the internet, especially Yeke Koluba talking, sitting and having a meeting and all the kind of it's a disgrace to our country. It's a disgrace to us as Liberian people. Our lawmakers cannot be behaving like this. This is gangsterism. Both of them need to go to jail. Both of them need to be tried. And you see, that's why I can't come back to Liberia. I will not hesitate to try those people and put them in jail. I will not hesitate to put people in jail. I will not hesitate to have you flunked under the law. Nobody coming to beat you illicitly. Nobody coming to just grab you and beat you. But we institute corporal punishment in Liberia. Our country jails, not the American jails. We are African people. We will not pack our jails with politicians. We will not pack our jails with petty criminals. No, we're not doing that shit. You go to court, you have your day in court. You petty criminals, you rude and, and, and unruly people in our country, we discipline you all. Because our country can't function with our discipline. Starting from the top to the bottom, we fuck your asses. We will go to court and the judge will dictate how many latches you have. And the military will take you to the beach every Sunday and will flock bitches. It will be a public flocking every Sunday. After church, when we finish praying to God and everything, we'll line the ropes up and we'll flock the shit out of you. Because that's how it's got to be until my country is straightened up. We can't tolerate the shit that's going on in our country. Everybody unruly, man. What is this? People got to take responsibility for their damn actions. No, our country lost because of these two useless lawmakers. Our country lost because of these immature, childish people say they won't be leaders of a nation. We can't tolerate this shit. We can't tolerate it. If the university students are unruly, there are ways we can handle them. They are under discipline. They are students of an institution. If you're going to punish them, there are ways to punish them. Up to expulsion. We got disciplinary standards in our school. So you can't punish the whole school. Say student political activities stop because of a group of people or two groups. No. No. That's the foundation of intellectual participation in our society, our University of Liberia. How many places we got for you for our students to intellectually participate in, in dialogue and discourse? We don't have that many places. So our University of Liberia is the foundation for intellectual discourse of any kind. But we got ways to discipline people, even intellects. So when you're dealing with intellects, you can't come with fools. You can't come with idiots. Like our Carol Gray and, and, and Yeke Kaluba. You Look, our country has gone so bad now that we, you know how to deal with our university students. And all of this started on the top. It started on the top. Talk, University students used to ride and all that shit on a Tuckman. But Tuckman knew how to handle our society. Our society was different at that time, to be truthful. At that time, we had a close-knit society in Monrovia. 
You see, that, that just showed the kind of control that my had over Liberia. When you go and misbehave, Tottenham will warn your parents. We warn your parents. He come to warn the students. No. He warned the parents. You're tired, your damn children. Your children are misbehaving. They misbehave. We're coming after you because you're supposed to be disciplining your children. The next day, you will not see any damn riot. You will not see any damn protests. You will not see any damn shit because touch my finger warning the parents. When you come home, your own parents will flog you. We hear you, you cause trouble at the university. What? The president calls you and told the no, man, your parents will jump on you and start flogging you. Protest, the protest end. But Toba lost touch with the Liberian people. Toba brought another existence into our country that took us away from familyhood, took us away from societal living, took, it made us more independent like Americans. People were coming home behaving, all the young guys coming, taking our country, had no concept of Liberian roots. They had no concept of it. They, know, they had no concept that it takes a village to raise a child. They had no concept. They're coming from America. They're young. They think they're gangsters. They think they're bad boys. Got all the music, hip hop, and all of that. Coming home, being ministers and shit like that. And they had no roots. And that's why I'm trying to tell my pa. Because I saw it as a political scientist. As a student study political science, I saw it. I saw my society changing. I saw us losing touch with our cultural roots of village living, of sharing, of taking care of each other, of monitoring each other activities. All of that stopped. It stopped. Because I remember when I was growing up, man, I did shit somewhere when I get home, my mom knew about it. How my mom knew about it? And I told you how they never used to say a word to me. I come home, they would act like nothing happened. They would treat me so nice. Uh, you know, after the first time they treat you nice like that, then in the night when you sleep in my mom get right there, my pa got right there, they lock the they lock the room door and take the key out so I can't escape. Then the bitches start flocking. Have you had two people flocking you at the same time? <laughs> two people just tear my ass away, man. That's why I, I, I told you I listened to one of my cousins uh, 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 Warsaw, Icky boy, talking about how your pa was so ruthless and mean to him. So I was, I was listening to yeah, he was, he was telling me, he said, uh, you know, Pablo, you know, uh, my, my pa was so bad and mean to me. I said, yeah. I said, what he did to you so? Because I couldn't believe that Thomas Walsh was so bad to his own children. And I, I grew up with them. I know so Thomas was also treating his children so bad. So I wanted to know where, where he came over talking about. He said, right, my pa used to abuse me and all of that. So I said, hey, what's wrong? What was wrong? He said, man, do you know in the night when I did wrong, my pa used to come in the room and lock the door, take the key out, and just fuck my ass. And the man just beat me, bro. I started laughing. I said, oh. I said, you had a good. You had one man beating you. I had two people beating my ass. Do you know what it is to be in deep sleep and you feel the latches coming on your ass and you can't move because the people feel this around in the bed and every shit and they're not relenting? Man, you run out of the bed, they're freaking on it. They won't get you out. Both sides. There came a time I found out that my aunt had these suitcases a certain place in the room she used to keep. And every time I jump on the suitcase, they would stop. They would draw back. <laughs> 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 so now that was my saving grace, man. When the people surround me, the, the, the bats around my ass and won't beat me. I jump off the bed and don't spring straight onto those suitcases. Those suitcases. Then she, they would stop. Oh, can I, can I say, I know, I ain't coming down here. You'll leave my ass alone. Then they would put the switch down. I said, open the room door. 
Yeah, that is the way. Don't know. Open the room door. Why are you locking the room door? <laughs> oh, it's going to be so funny. Me and my parents used to have some serious debates, man. The busy want to flock me. Can you imagine? And I'm on top of the suitcases there, leaning back, and they tell me to come down. I am I ain't coming down. <laughs> what coming down for? To get more latches? They are telling us, say, open the door. They said they, they won't open the door. You gotta open the door. You open the door. I ain't coming down. I climb me higher. So then they will open the door. I jump from the bed, jump straight down, grab the door. Then they every beat this stuff. But I mean, we used to have some serious shit, man. But we lost all of that on a tour bus. Our country started changing. Started becoming American lives. We started moving away from the African and still culture that we knew that our country has existed all so long. Even with the for peace sake, there was a purpose for the for, for peace sake. There wasn't for peace sake for everything. But on a turbot, for peace sake became the norm for corruption. When people steal, why you want bother me? For peace sake, man, you, you do it, do it, I do it, why you want bother me? So it became the norm for stealing on the turbot. Everything changed because Tottenham wasn't tolerating that shit. Everything was close knit on the Tottenham. Tottenham kept Liberia close knit. Tottenham wanted to free Liberia, to open up Liberia. But the way he was doing it, he was doing it at the expense of our culture, of our freedom. Our, because when you bring rude people in, when you bring people with our culture, when you bring people with our discipline, people with our understanding their roots in, everything breaks down. Because they have no patriotism for the nation. All of that builds up Patriotism. When we're talking about patriotism of the nation and of the people, all that encompass what we're talking about. How you be patriotic for something you don't know about? You cannot be. You will not, not die for something that you don't love. How will you die for it? Like today, Liberians will, drive, will die more for tribe that they would die for Liberia. And that what happened during our civil war. People were dying for tribe and not for Liberia. And this is the, 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 the this occurrence in our country today. We have no patriots. Because why? The, the Liberians today do not understand Liberian culture. They don't even know Liberian history. Even in my own family, I'm talking to my little brother, my mom, children. They have no culture. Because my mom never told my brothers and sisters about the history of Liberia, about my grandfather, or anything. They know about it because they went to school. But as a family, supposed to teach you about your family, we never had that. Even in my father's house. My father never took time to teach us about anything. He would tell, oh, that your cousin, so and so, oh, that. But he never taught us anything. He never taught us anything. So most of us had to go out and learn our own or learn from our sisters and brothers. So we don't have culture. There's no culture. And when you don't have culture, how will you get patriotism? Patriotism comes from culture. That means you just came from somewhere. You are non-existent. You know, I did the same people want to fight about property, land, and all. Let me tell you something. When you come from a society or culture and roots, everything is connected to spiritualism. Everything is connected to spiritualism. Because at the root of our society, spiritualism, Jesus Christ, when you talk about Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost, what do you think you're talking about? You're not talking about nothing physical. You're talking about things in the abstract. Things that we can't see, feel, nor touch. It's solely on faith that we exist. And the faith comes from laws. 
because we have laws. Every church, every religion, every societal organization, every organization got laws. If you don't have laws, there will be chaos. But you cannot be, have laws if you cannot hold people accountable. That's the purpose for having laws. So when people violate it, they can be held accountable so that other people will not do it again. And we preserve the sanctity of our laws. But when people have no culture, people have no sense of history, people have no sense of self, how can you be patriotic? You cannot be patriotic. That's why with a high illiteracy rate in our country today, Liberians are not patriotic. They don't know what patriot is. They don't know what it means. So when you don't know about patriotism, what you rely on, the closest thing to you, tribe, where you see all your people, you speak the same dialect, you have the same culture, you have the same God. That's the closest thing to you. Because you have no concept of a greater nation. You have no vision of a greater nation. You see with me? Sometimes I get tired sitting with my Congo people, man. I get tired hearing the bullshit. I will sit with different people of Liberian origin. That's why it's good that we fix our country. We put roads all through our country. When you get tired with Monrovia, drive to Basel, drive to Nimba, drive to Sano, drive to Krukos, go eat with the good people on the beaches. That's what we do in America. That will make America so great. That will make the people here got culture. Because whatever you do, you can mix with other people. You have that freedom. And this is what they call real freedom. You see? Because unlike the past, when people couldn't go inside in society, when people couldn't go in certain areas, America is more open now to societies. Yes, they've got bad people. Yes, they got bad groups. They got secret society people that don't want to mix with other people. They got all that here. But on a greater scheme, with a greater picture, America is open up because people can relate to each other. When you don't know each other, when you cannot relate to each other, we fear each other. And that will happen in our country. Because our country is so close-knit. Our country is not expanding. Liberians are not getting involved with each other. Can you imagine? I took Liberian people with me to Sino County when I went in Liberia about five years ago, six years ago. I took Liberian people with me. We want to keep my country to film, to interview the superintendent. Do you know when we got in Cape Mount County, the Liberians that were in my car, that live in Monrovia, were scared of the people in Cape Mount County? I couldn't believe it. They were telling me, oh, no, don't eat there. Don't touch that people. Be careful where you go. Don't go in the people's house. These are people I couldn't understand. That. I turned around and said, what's wrong with y'all? I said, are you people crazy? You in Monrovia, you in Liberia, then you scared of other Liberians? But you know why? Because our country is still landlocked. Liberians cannot travel with ease over throughout our country. So we have all kind of belief and myths and falsehoods about each other. Still, to this very day, people scared of each other in Monrovia People scared of each other in Cape Town. People scared of each other in Sino. Why? Because our country is now opening up. We can't freely travel to places and associate with each other. Can you imagine from Monrovia to Cape Town? It took me almost half a day because of the road and the ditches. That's just a little one and a half hour drive on a good road or two hours at most from Monrovia to Cape Town. Two hours at most. It took me half a day. Then when we got to Cape Town, 
Our people in my car scared of the people in Cape Town County. They got juju. They got voodoo. I'm going to be careful. I mustn't go in the house. I'm going to be careful. I talk to people. Oh, look at all the people looking at me. I mean, all of that they were seeing in the car. I couldn't believe it. But that's the same problem we face in America here when people don't know each other. When people can't relate to each other. When you don't know each other, you scatter each other. You scatter your differences. But if our roads were open up in Monrovia, if on a Sunday you could put back your children in your car and say, man, let's go to Maryland for the day and come back. And you drive from Monrovia to Maryland is about three, four hours. You drive four hours. You leave early. You drive by the time you get there at nine o'clock. You and your family spend the whole day in Maryland. You'll have lunch. You'll visit all the places in Maryland. Get in your car and drive back home by four o'clock. Liberia will change. Liberia will totally change. Why? Because you can travel. You can relate to each other. You will know that everything not about juju and voodoo and about people killing you. No. You will talk to people in the other county. One Sunday you drive to Maryland, the next Sunday you drive to Grand Gita, the next Sunday you drive to Sino, the next Sunday you drive to Maryland. When we can move through our country like that with ease, going and coming, our country will change. Our people's mentality will change. Why? Because we'll be able to relate to each other in real time. Now on the internet, now with telephone or cell phone, no. It's by me driving to Maryland to eat lunch. Driving to Sando to eat breakfast. Driving to Kipman to have dinner. And be able to drive back home the same night. Why we can't do it in our country? Because of the petty stealing. Because of the warlords and the criminals and all these bandits lawmakers leading us, stealing our wealth and resources. I would do that. We can't do it. But every time I look at my country, I cry, man. Every time I look at my country, I cry. But Joseph Boca right too, man. Roads, roads, roads. When we get roads, our country will change. Can you imagine for 200 years, we have not had rules to our country. We, we are still primitive backwards, fighting each other, scared of each other, distrusting each other. Why? Because we do not know each other. We do not know each other. If we know each other, all the myths, the lies, the things will dissipate and disappear. Why? Because nobody got to tell me about my people in Maryland County. I go to Maryland County every day. Every other day. Nobody can tell me my people in Sino. I drive to Sino anytime I want to. Nobody can tell me my people in Cape Man. I drive to Cape Man all the time. So when we can do those things, our country will open automatically by itself. Nobody will do anything. It will open. It will open up. Our people will learn about business how to sell business, how to protect their villages, how to do things and build the villages. They will be able to leave Maryland and come to Monrovia and buy things and take it back to Monrovia, I mean to Maryland, and make Maryland prosper. It will not be a myth. Right now it's a myth. When you talk about leaving Maryland and coming to Monrovia, people thinking if, if that's a reality. Damn, I mean, you go away Monrovia, because you know the hardship in getting to Monrovia. You're not going to take one day, you're going to take two, three days on the road. That's asinine for this day and age. And my people, that our country. That our country. But the more I see these useless warlords, I hear Yeke Koluba talking, I hear UG Falcon talking, all these loud mouth people talking. Our country not going nowhere until we get rid of all these people and people who love Liberia come back home. All these people love themselves. 
you had you had a loud talking boastful for for um, boastfully talking about themselves and what they're doing, you know, acting like they 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 they, they, they know so much about our country and our country still not going nowhere, not going nowhere. But it's up to us. I keep telling you time and time and time again. It's up to us. If we really want to see our country change, we need to be more stringent on our leaders. We need to enforce our laws. Force our laws with our mercy. And if our leaders cannot enforce our laws, we need to rise up and protest. We need to get rid of them at the bottom bounds. We need to demand that they do the right thing. We're not asking them to do the right thing. We are demanding that they do the right thing. Our country will change. Don't let Rodney Chesson get, get away with it because I'm Rodney Chesson and I, I can talk good and, and I sound like I'm educated. No, no, no. That has nothing to do with our laws. You see me, I even piss off my own sister today because my sister's stealing from the family. She lied and said she's the only executive of our family to get money to build a school for her daughter. And they can't put the picture of the school on the internet no, because they don't want the rest of us to see it. So it's hidden. No picture, nothing. You see corruption? Now why would my sister do that to me? Lie to us. Steal from us. She take our money and mix it with her money. And she a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. She disrespecting me. She's telling me, fuck you. I don't give a fuck if you're a lawyer. I'm going to steal this shit. Why? And these are the things we encounter in our country every day when people steal. And we got to let them know. That's my sister. Other people shutting up. But I'm not shutting up. I'm telling her, my sister done a lot for us. She brought us to America. She got no reason to steal from me. She has no reason to do anything wrong. My sister want money, I would give her money. Even right now with all the stealing she doing, I'm not taking her to court, but I want her to know what she's doing. I'm not stupid, we know it. And we know she a role. It's not right. I will not hug her and kiss her knowing that she's doing this. No, I can't do that. I'm not that kind of person. Rodney Chesson is not that kind of person. You do me wrong, I'll let you know you do me wrong. That's why I went to school for. That's why my father spent all his money to send me to school. My mother spent all her money. And I made a sacrifice to study, to learn. Not so people can step on me and my brothers and sisters. My sister not doing to me alone. She doing to all my younger brothers and sisters. They know it too. They know it wrong, but they're scared to talk about it. But I don't want that kind of money. You stealing thousands and thousands of us and giving us $600 a year from our power estate, that's stealing. I don't want that kind of money. I don't want it even from Liberia. That's why I don't join people. People think I'm proud. I don't join other people. You don't see me on other talk show hosts. No. Because the majority of my people are deceitful. Majority of my people you can't trust. They will talk one thing today. When you join them, their behavior tells you a totally different thing. That's why I don't join nobody. I don't join no fucking person in the world like me. I can't join you until I know you and what you stand for. Because Liberian people will flop on you in a minute for money, for family, for property. They will flip on you in a minute. Do three things, money, family, property. They will flip on you in a minute. In a minute. So if you're dealing with people who don't have integrity and believe in things, that you believe in, 
Be careful you be betrayed by your own family. Because everybody in our country corrupt. Everybody in our country looking for what's in it for me. Not what's in it for us, but for me. And when you got people like that, you got to be careful. You can't have friends. You got to evaluate people carefully. And if you're a leader, you got to be ready to punish people with all mercy. With all mercy. Or they will destroy your leadership. Because our people can't be trusted. You know? Everybody related in some way. They think when they do wrong, the family member will come and talk to you and resolve the problem. But we can't do that for our country. When you want to be a leader for our country, we're going to put you on a different pedestal. From family, from friends, from associates. Because when you fuck up, some of us coming after you. Some of us want you punished. Some of us want your money back. Then in Nigeria, all the people that stole our money, we want our money back. Especially if they still participate in politics, we want our fucking money back. These people can just rob our country with impunity, and we suffer and bear the brunt. This is what going on when people steal, 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 and we don't do nothing. So, to end my show today, I will tell my Liberian people straight up. Somebody got to be punished in Liberia for what happened at the University of Liberia. Yeke Koliba and Akari's grade got to be punished. They got to bear the total cost or the full cost for every financial loss that was suffered. Even the death of those guys, they got to bury that dead body. The parents got to rise up. We got to sue these people. We got to sue them. We can't talk no more. We got to go to court. Glorious Scott case. The Liberian people got to rise up and sue these bitches. We got to sue them left and right. We got to sue them in Af uh, ECOWAS court. And we got to do it as a people. We got to protest. This government cannot continue to kill people, to do criminal shit and get away with it. We got to hold them accountable. We got to hold every Liberian in Liberia accountable for your action. Whether you CDC or you ANC or opposition, I know a current screen and Yeke Kaloba got to pay for everything that happened at the University of Liberia. You can't punish Liberian students by saying no politics and this and that. You're stupid. Do them try that thing with a 88 section or whatever. It didn't work. It didn't work. How are you banned politics? From anywhere in Liberia, when this is a year for politics, give me a damn break. You see, our educated people are stupid. And so now we gotta stand up to them and tell them, look, your laws and your behaviors are asinine. You can't make laws to hurt yourself. Then you come back and break the very laws because you found out that the law you made was useless. That's what we need, true technocrats and leaders for the Republic of Liberia. My class is done. I'll see you all tomorrow where we'll talk about some bullshit that will come out again in Liberia. Every day is a new shit. So tomorrow, some shit coming out. Somebody will step on somebody's cat or dog or mice and will stir up some shit again in the West African Republic of Liberia. Have a good day, my people. And know that the Tony Commander J.R. Kupapa Kupokpa Chess is your man. Without him, you're lost. Have a good day. <laughs>